Hey guys, from burying talents to building empires, unleash your potential. That's the title of today's message. This is a message about true ownership, true ownership. This is not just about what we possess, but what possesses us. This is not just about what we govern, but what governs us. Is it love or is it fear? Are we possessed by true love or false love? I'm going to share with you three stories from the Bible that will help us to reflect on exactly this question. The first story. Jesus is on a journey with his disciples. And at a certain point, a young, wealthy man approaches Jesus with a life or death question. This is the story of the rich, young ruler, and it can be found in the book of Mark. As he was setting out on a journey, a young man ran up to him and knelt down before him and asked him, Good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, You know the commandments. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and mother. And he said to him, Teacher, I have kept all of these from my youth up until now. So he's saying, Teacher, teacher, I know. I'm doing these things. But still, how can I be assured of eternal life? So hearing this, Jesus looks down at him and feels a love for him and said to him, one thing you lack. Now go and sell all that you possess and give it to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. And then come and follow me. This answer from Jesus was not what the young man wanted to hear. It crushed his heart, and he walked away saddened and defeated. At this point, Jesus turns to his disciples and says this famous line. He says, It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. So what is this story about? What is it that Jesus sees in this young man's heart? Is it, is it just that if you have money, then you can't have eternal life? No, that's not the issue. It wasn't his possessions that were stopping him from having eternal life. It was his fear of losing them. It was perhaps exactly this fear that led him to ask Jesus this question in the first place. Because he is following all the laws, he is doing all the things correctly, he is blessed with abundance and has riches and wealth. But there is one thing in his heart that is causing him to be afraid. It is that he is afraid of losing all of those things. Jesus saw that it was his fear of losing those things that would stop him from being free. And as a gift, Jesus gave to him that direction. Go and sell everything and give to the poor. 
Not because of the things cannot be had, not because wealth is the problem, but that his value was attached to that wealth. That wealth for him was his source of life. He was possessed by it. This is a story not about what you possess, but about what possesses you. In this case, it was fear that possessed this young man. What was he afraid of? I want to now share with you the second story. This is a story about Jesus in the temple and he is observing people coming in and putting their donations in the treasury. He is watching the people make their offering and he notices something that no one else sees. This is also in the book of Mark and it is called the story of the widow's mite. And he sat down opposite the treasury and began observing how the people were putting money into the treasury and many rich people were putting in large sums. A poor widow then came and put in two small copper coins, which amount to just one cent. Calling his disciples over to him, he said to them, Truly I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the contributions in the treasury. For they all put in out of their surplus, but she, out of her poverty, put all that she owned, all that she had to live on. This story is a story that teaches us that true ownership is not about how much we give, but the attitude of our heart when we give the attitude that we have in our heart. In this case, she was giving absolute faith, right? Just like the young rich man was afraid to let go because he was afraid that he would lose everything. Fundamentally, what, what was he afraid of? He was afraid that God would not take care of him if he gave everything away. But she, the widow, who already had so little, was not afraid. She was not possessed by fear. She was possessed by faith, an incredible faith. And if you think about that widow, do you think she feels the love of God? Do you think a person with such faith feels the love of God? I'm sure that she does. Okay. So, am I saying that in order to be faithful, you have to lose everything? You have to give away everything? No. For that, let us look at this third story. In this third and final story from the Bible, Jesus is speaking with his disciples and he's giving them advice. He's trying to help them prepare for the end times, for the time of Jesus' return, and he's trying to get them ready to know how they should prepare and what they should do with their gifts, what they should do with what's been given to them. This is the story of the talents, and it can be found in the book of Matthew, and it goes like this. For it is as if a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. So the master is going on a journey and he calls his slaves, three of them. And he's going to give these three slaves the duty of taking care of his property. To the first he gives five talents. To the second, he gives two, and to the third man, he gives one talent, each 
according to their ability. Then the master goes away. The one who had received five talents went off at once and traded them, and he made five more talents. He doubled the money. A talent was a measure of monetary value. So the first slave immediately goes off and utilizes those five talents and trades with them and doubles them, right? In the same way, the one who had two talents did the same thing. He doubled them. But the one who had received one talent, he went off and he dug a hole in the ground and he buried his master's money. He hid his master's money so that no one would take the talent from him. Okay, so when the master returned, he said, take the talent from the third one and give it to the one who has ten talents, the first guy. For all those who have, more will be given and they will have abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. What does this mean? This, in this case, Jesus is guiding his disciples and he's guiding us to know that in the end times we have to be prepared. Regardless of how much we have, we need to be productive with what we have. We need to utilize, we need to multiply that which we are given from our master. And this is a metaphor to say that which is gifted to us by God. We have to be faithful and we have to be productive with that which we have been given by God. Now, the man who buried the one talent, what possessed him? Was he possessed by faith? Was he possessed by love and confidence? Or was he possessed by fear? He was possessed by fear. He was possessed by fear of loss. Even though he, he just had one talent to lose, he was afraid to lose it, so he buried it. He hid it. He didn't show anyone where it was. But the first two, they multiplied that which was given to them. The other two were productive. The other two were possessed by confidence, by faith that they could take what was given to them by their master and multiply it. This is what Jesus was trying to say. So, what do we understand ourselves from this story? You know, the word talent. In, in English, the word talent means one who has a skill or a special gift or an ability, right? So I don't know how that word translates in your language, but the word talent actually comes from the Greek word talenton, which was used in Greek to translate from the Hebrew of this scripture in the Bible. The word talent actually means money. It was a unit of money. And it came to have the meaning of skill, ability, abundance, gift. So what do we do with our gifts? What do we do with our talents? Do we bury them or do we build with them? So the question comes down to what am I possessed by? Am I possessed by true love? Or false love? Am I possessed by, through my faith, am I possessed by love, by true love, by, with confidence, despite maybe the risks, despite some of the obstacles? Or am I possessed by fear? Will my decisions finally be guided by love or by fear? Fear of loss or fear of failure, fear of being seen in bad light. Fear of losing faith, fear of losing, uh, no, not faith, uh, face, right? Fear of losing face or fear of losing a sense of value from others. Many kinds of fears can possess us. 
Now, what am I afraid of? Me, Damien. Now, I've been reflecting on this. Sometimes I act like the first two servants. I recognize I have something and I multiply it. But other times I'm possessed by fear. I'm possessed by false love. I'm afraid to use my talents. I'm afraid and I hide them. I may hide many of my talents, my skills and abilities because I'm afraid. What am I afraid of? Maybe I'm afraid that it would not be the correct representation for this organization because I'm a public figure. Many times I may hold back and hide. I'm really reflecting on this personally. So, I believe we should utilize with greater confidence the talents, the skills, the gifts that we have been given for the sake of others, for the sake of the whole, for the sake of the public good. We cannot be afraid. Let us not be afraid and possessed by false love. Let us be, afraid, be possessed by true love. Together, me and you. You know, True Father talked about the result of the human fall and God's attitude with humanity since that time. He didn't kill us all off. He didn't kill the devil. He has been looking for a way to rebuild humanity, right? Father wants us to rebuild centered on true love, not false love. He said this, Father said, A love relationship, once engaged, determines ownership. It determines the right of inheritance. It determines the right to live together, the right to share the same position, and the right to participate in each other's work. With respect to all these rights, Adam and Eve came totally under Satan's ownership. Father is saying that because our early ancestors engaged in a relationship with the false parent, then they became false parents and gave this lineage to humanity that is rooted in all of those characteristics that we inherited from that false parentage. We are owned by that false parentage. We are owned by that false love. We are owned by that fear. Unless we choose to be owned by God. So many great peace leaders have come to help save us, especially Jesus, to forgive us and give us a chance of, of inheriting the true inheritance of true love. And it is our father and mother as true parents through the blessing that have given us the birthright to fully internally and externally claim that birthright of true love, to be possessed by true love, to be possessed by our heavenly parent. And therefore we have no excuse to be guided or dominated or possessed by fear. But still we may struggle with that because we've been doing it for thousands of years. So, Satan is the father of fear, driven by fear, but God is the father of love, the parent of love. And so, God wants us to rebuild with love, to rebuild ourselves, to rebuild our families, to rebuild our communities, to rebuild our heavenly empire. So let's not bury our talents, our skills, our wealth, our abilities and hide them because we're afraid how others may look at us or afraid of losing something. Let us instead, instead utilize our skills, utilize our talents, utilize our blessing and multiply it and show the world and build our heavenly empire. So here are three things I want you to consider after listening to this message. And you can do all three of these things, or at least one of these things, this week, starting today. Number one, reflect on your talents, on your resources. 
Maybe write them down. Take time to reflect on the gifts that you have been given. Write some down right now. And look at them. Which, which of them stand out to you? Which of them would you like to start utilizing? Which of the tools that you have in your toolbox from God would you like to use more? And set yourself some goals. Any goal that comes to mind and maybe set yourself some concrete action steps this week to utilize the gifts. Take them out of the ground and utilize them. Multiply them. Number two, just get ready to step out of your comfort zone. Let's step out of our comfort zone, right? If we bury everything, if we hide that just because it's comfortable and we're staying in that relationship with fear, we're not going to go anywhere. It's fear that keeps us in our comfort zone, literally. There's nothing wrong with comfort, but there's a lot wrong with being afraid to go out of the comfort zone. So get ready to go out of your comfort zone, at least in one area this week. And three, invest in others. That means make a commitment to invest in others, help others. You have talents and skills that can be given to others and can be encouraged, encouragement for others to take their talents that they've hidden and develop them and multiply them. So, brothers and sisters, ownership is not just about what we possess. True ownership is also about what possesses us. So let's not be afraid. Let's be powerful. Let's be faithful. Let's be loving. Let's be the sons and daughters of Heavenly Parent that we were born to be. Let's not bury our talents. Let us build our heavenly empire. Brothers and sisters, it's time to unleash your potential. God bless you. Have a great day and a great week.